The moment has come and today we'll be testing the nitrous oxide slugs and we'll be using a lot of viewer suggested targets. I hope you'll enjoy it. Let's get out there and shoot them. Welcome back Calflator folks. I'm Hunter Pelvis and I'm wearing the new Tactic Tactic Glasses 2.0. Jeff provided They're in these. 4K vision. It's 4K vision. I can actually see the future with these glasses on right now. <laughs> you can see fish under the ocean. You can see deer in those mountains uh, 40 miles away. It's amazing what these glasses will do. So we're hoping it'll improve my aim today. I figure it, it actually worked out well with the shirt. <laughs> Jeff brought me these goofy rainbow windshield glasses. And I just happened to be wearing my uh, cat it's for DJ. safety. They're safety glasses. <laughs> That's right cat taco DJ, cat pizza DJ shirt. I mean, it all goes together perfectly. Pride month or something. <laughs> hey, so on a, on a not serious note, we're out here today to shoot those nitrous cartridges. If you haven't seen the video, pause this one, go back and look at the video so you see how these things are made. But we had a lot of people saying that we should be shooting CO2 cartridges. Jeff showed you that they don't fit in a 12 gauge. So what he did is took the little nitrous cartridges from, what is it, whipped cream? Yeah. Yeah. So little tiny nitrous cartridges. Those of you who think that these things are flammable and they're going to explode and blow up the gun and kill uh, people in a 50 foot radius. Well, we can't say, we, it might be true. Oh, great. <laughs> I'm glad I brought my rainbow glasses. Yeah, you'll, your face will be preserved. That's right. Preserved. Only my head will be standing there behind these this yeah. stupid rainbow windshield. Um, Jeff has loaded some of these in, as you can see on his video, has loaded them in with the nipple to the back and some with the nipple to the front. And yeah, because... And I'm glad I did that video because it's better to get all these suggestions then than to get them now after we've already done it. You yeah. know, that's very frustrating. What you should have done was what it could have should have. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he did ask you in that video what you wanted to see shot. So if you have a complaint about what we're going to shoot today, too bad. You should have watched that video and thrown your suggestions yeah. in there. So he has activated most of those suggestions. We've got a ton of targets over here for you. I'm not going to talk too much about these because that video completely explains how these were built, why they, they were built. They are made to shoot these things. Exactly. They're not just thrown in a shell. It was they were a custom load, hand load, with a custom wad, custom powder load, everything, just to shoot these things. And we, how will they? How will they uh, do for home defense? I don't know. If you're <laughs> shooting hippies or something, it'd probably be hippies. Probably fine. Hippie crack. All yeah. right, I'm gonna go take my Elden John sunglasses off. We're yeah, we need to get things. rid of those. Yes, we're gonna try these things through a um, rifled bore. We're gonna start out with Little Tony. You guys remember That's Little Tony? That's not rifled. Little Tony's You're not. You're confusing me. Little Tony's not. We're gonna shoot him through Little Tony just to, to prove that they're not gonna explode on us and kill everybody in a 50 foot range. And also to demonstrate what they look like without any spin stabilization. Yes. And then, we, I can't even guarantee they'll work with spin stabilization because they're so long. It's, they're they may long. fly very weird. They're very long. Or they may fly yeah. well. I don't know. But I, I think we'll see some weird stuff going on here. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> stupid glasses. <laughs> hey, if you're not rolling around nipples to the front, you're doing it wrong. Correct yourself. Let's get to it. <laughs> Roll crimp area is actually pretty tight. I know. It's supposed to be. It see holds how, it in there more. See how it's flared out right there? Right, right. But that's the crimp it even harder. You can you can fit it. All see? Right. You just got to shove that, it in the hole. That, yeah, it, it's it's <laughs> part of the design. Believe All right. Not. And Jeff's suggestion is that we take some of these Kevlar sheets here. Once we close up little Tony carefully, we're going to mount him back in his little mount here. We're going to wrap it in Kevlar just for first shot, you know? We don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, we don't know what's going to happen, so let's wrap the action here in case this thing goes nuclear on us. That is not a very good piece of Kevlar. There's better <laughs> Kevlar than that. Okay, let's see if we can get a, a chrono reading on it. Are you ready? All right, I'm ready when you are. I'm ready. Here we go. Oh, boy. 1446. Decent recoil. Boy. So it plowed into the Kevlar, the edge of it here. Look at that, it's got t-shirt bonded to it. It didn't burst it though. And it's hot, it is hot. It did not burst, but it flattened it out, look at that. Jeez, well, how and did it not burst? You can see here, that's probably where it was, where that tape was engaging the rifling. There's no rifling, dang it. <laughs> the smooth. Yeah. There's your no, it should have been a, a full fit. You know, that's probably probably helped. There's your toilet paper residue. Yeah. It just kind of disintegrated. Melted t-shirt though. I mean that 
It might burst any time now. It could, any time while we're holding it. Wow. The capsule did not do too bad out of a smooth bore. This was shot at 12 yards or around 11 meters. Accuracy wise, it did okay. We hit the target, that's the most important thing. But it just was not very stable flying through there. In fact, it hit sideways. Threw out this loaf of bread for you. We canned it at an angle just a little bit. See what it'll do. Let's put one of those cylinders against it and uh, see if we can break through the crust. Russian ballistic gel. Or bread. Giant wood block. Yeah, a lot of people wanted to see that too. Okay, they're round butt end first. If this, the last one did not look very good, so. No, and this is rifle barrels. So yeah, I know, it's supposed to make everything better. It does, yeah, so let's give it, I mean, it's probably this super laser uh, nuclear thermal. Yeah, scope. That eBay scope there. Look at that. It's a little bit much for that gun. It's, it's hovering off the receiver. There's no repeatability on that. Oh, come on, it goes <laughs> back, springs back to where it was. Springs back to life. <laughs> the rifle, that's part of the, the, the barrel. That's a $700 barrel, friend. I'm not sure how, uh, <laughs> I'm not sure how ballistically sound this idea is, uh, okay. but let's well, give it a try. Okay. Okay, again, full rifling, wooden block. Viewer suggestion. Okay, uh, I'm ready. Here we go. Oh, you clipped it. Did you hit the block? Yeah, you clipped the side of it. Oh. All right, uh, so zero accuracy. I was aiming here and <laughs> over here. He just clipped it. Look at what it did to that thing, though. It actually flew around the corner. <laughs> um, yeah, it dug in here like a angry beaver. That's. It didn't look like much when, from where we were at. Using full rifling, well, we didn't see much improvement in stability. It didn't fly through the air like a torpedo. Luckily, again, he hit some part of the target. Now, the capsule may have burst. I'm seeing some kind of uh, gases there. That may not just be dust. I'm gonna put just the tip in. Okay, everyone thinks we loaded them backwards for some reason. The nipple should go forward. I'm not sure why, but we'll try it. Because yeah, so many people, gonna... uh, there was probably a hundred comments saying that we loaded it backwards. So we've tried these a bunch already. Let's try it this way. Yeah, and this one has the aluminum uh, rifling band on it to build up to, to engage the rifling. Shaped like dolphin, so maybe it'll... Uh... Okay. We'll shoot the wood target again. All right. Good news is we hit it. The bad news is it still flew like trash. It tore a big giant hole out of that. That is block. a big hole. So we found this on the ground. It ruptured and spun off like a uh, like a firework. Everyone thought it was going to fly back at us. Check this out. Like a rocket. Look how deep that is. Yeah, not only deep, but you can see the little wood fibers in there. Let me turn it towards the sunlight. You can see the little wood fibers in there have all been crushed and cut. This thing actually hit, and I'll show you here. This thing fits like a puzzle piece. Yeah. The little nipple fits right there. Look how that hit. Clink. And it just burrowed in there, clear down to here before it bounced back out. Yeah, that's wild. That is wild. It didn't come anywhere near us. Yeah. So safety sallies don't need to worry about that. But. The nipple first cartridge looked pretty promising at first and then it veered off and hit sideways. But it did at least crack open the steel case of the cartridge and cause the gases to shoot out a little bit and made the cartridge, well, it kind of turned it into a ground bloom flower. Well, we didn't think it was even possible, but rifling did not make this any better. So I can't believe it. We're going back to Little Tony, a smooth bore, and uh, Let's see if we can go back to a semi-super inconsistent wobbly round. <laughs> Woo. These were just less erratic. Yeah, less erratic. At least the first shot. You can't tell by one shot, of course, but let's try it smoothbore again. One shot is just science, Jeff. Oh, that's true. There's no control. Okay, wet magazine, smoothbore. All right. Butt in first. What will it do? I don't know. Are you ready? I think so. Okay, go. Here we go. Left. You hit it though. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, another not very accurate uh, shot. No, oh, hit low and left, but man, look at the uh, ragged look. damage on this thing. Yeah, it just dug all the way, and it, and it hit sideways, it hit so that's sideways. even more impressive. Yeah, so it's <laughs> keyholing. Bigger surface area means it 
should be slowing the uh, round down, the projectile down a little bit, but man, it just still tore through wet magazines. And it's a, in case you're a first time visitor to the show, wet magazines is a pretty solid, very heavy and dense target. So um, it's a good indicator of how powerful some rounds are, some of the slugs we've Yeah, like a Foster slug, depending on what it, which one it is, will not go through that, you know? Yeah. It'll but almost go through or... It's tough to say, but had this been a center mass hit, I don't know, this one skipped out the edge. Uh, yeah, it's it's hard to speculate. I'm gone, sure people will speculate in sure. the comment section. It might have actually gone all the way through. Tell us how wrong we are. What they'll speculate in. Why do you, <laughs> why do you have Cat We lover, love our commenters, though, don't we? Cat Lovers Magazine, Jeff, <laughs> with Joan Collins. What? Now, the wet magazines are definitely not a hard target, like a steel plate, but an object going nearly a 1,000 miles an hour impact in it well, that was enough to cause that capsule to burst. Since these were not very accurate, it eliminated a lot of the smaller targets that a lot of viewers wanted to see, unfortunately. Okay, nipple the, first. the nipple first people will be very happy with this. Into a little Tony smooth bar. See, see how snug it is? Boy, it is a tight fit. It, it'll fit. You think it's ever coming that, out? That'll, that locks that, locks that locks crimp in, even locks tighter. In the, locks in the freshness. Yeah, it keeps it full, full pressure. As you can see by the chronograph reading, we were getting it. And we're going to shoot at um, two ballistic gel bears, one a plastisol bear and one a clear ballistics gel bear. You think they're going to fight? Well, we're going to hope to hit one of them. It's kind of interracial, isn't it? Shh. I don't think we could hit anything much further away than that. And I'm not even sure we can hit that. No, not unless you put a sheet of cardboard the size of a Toyota down there. <laughs> right? A refrigerator? I might be able to hit that concrete standpipe with a 30-foot <laughs> holdover. Yeah. Okay, I think I'm ready. All right, here we go. Right between the two bear heads. Yeah, gotcha. Whoa! I think he hit right between them. Yeah, but we broke the brick. Wow. So that must have been low. Gotcha. Whoa. Not very accurate, Greg. I don't know if you noticed. No, I didn't notice at all. <laughs> um, but the funny thing is, people also want us to shoot at a brick, so we got that out of the way. Got the brick out of the way inadvertently. Yeah, and it we, burst it. We cracked the brick, burst the cylinder. We don't know where it is. Uh, both bears went flying off. This guy has a little bit of a scar there on his toe. Oh, a little debris. But I'd like to see one hit a bear, Jeff. I do too. So I'm going to. Do we go back to rifling and maybe hope that'll work? I don't know. I don't know either. Do we just throw them at, at it like Superman villain? Just I say, uh, out of frustration, the just throw odds, the, Putting another one up here, the odds of it hitting the bear are as good as it missing. So let's, let's okay. try one up here again. Okay. Frontwards, backwards, spin, no spin. I think it's pretty clear now that these capsules are not very accurate projectiles. But I'm an optimist, and at least they're hitting something, and we're seeing the impacts. Instead of the capsules just kind of whizzing by the targets and completely missing. Now in case you were wondering, the pressure inside these capsules is about 1050 psi at 70 degrees Fahrenheit and I'm sure there was a little bit higher on this very hot day. I, 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 I'm losing faith in the, in the smooth board now. Yeah, I'm losing faith in the round all the <laughs> We did everything that I thought was correct and it's still not flying good. Okay. Let's see if we can at least hit a bear. Yeah, at 12 yards or whatever. Okay, uh, I'm ready. All right, I'm aiming for the orange bear on the left. Okay. Kind of. Kind of. I think Man. he hit the brick again. Did it really? I think so. <laughs> wow, there was a puff though. That thing might have exploded. The way these things were tumbling through the air, it surprised me we were able to hit anything with these things, even at, you know, 11 meters away or 12 yards. Now these capsules weigh 28.7 grams, or almost exactly one ounce. And when they do impact something, it is pretty impressive. And I do hope that you are so far enjoying this presentation. We're flip-flopping back to the full rifling. We're gonna run this one uh, nipple first. Nipple first. Everyone yeah. said that was that's how you had to do it. What do you have going on down range? A jug of water wearing a helmet. Yeah, I'm hoping something will hit something. It'll probably hit that aluminum plate, but... All right, here we go at the jug o water. Hey, it clipped it. Looks like it was low right. Yeah. 
any fun with these. Now in this shot, you could see that the cartridge is spinning and spinning quite well. And I think the biggest problem with these capsules is their length. They're about two and a half inches long or about 65 millimeters. And remember, these do still have liquid inside it, a few grams of it. And I doubt the liquid is spinning much at all. I don't know. If it's, a, it's a 50, I think there's a 50-50 chance you'll hit it. That's almost halfway. There's like a 90... 5% chance of hitting the table though. And uh, I'll put an extra, <laughs> extra large blue X on there. Yeah, just for encouragement. Okay, uh, I'm, I'm ready and rolling. All right, here we go. Oh, you hit the steel. Did I? Oh. But uh, it did hit the angle iron down here, shot it off to the right, but look at this, as it was exploding, dug into the table, and this little piece of shrapnel down here is oh my gosh really, don't cut yourself on it really in there wow can you get it out of there don't cut yourself i don't know i think it's burrowed in date. not the table see i told you there was a 95 percent chance of hitting the table this thing went through this little nipple as it was bur burrowing through the plastic table uh Carved out a little <laughs> little core of plastic right there. You see it I can't there? see it because the angle's kind of funky. I'm trying Let's to get see. some light on it. Can hold you see on, the hold on. You see that little cylindrical piece of plastic from the table that, that uh, was like a Play-Doh fun factor. Yeah, Squeeze extruded that. it. Wow, that's wild. We got the velocity, we got the spin, we just don't have the stability. But we still have an impressive impact. Even hitting that piece of steel at a 45 degree angle is enough to cause that capsule just to burst. Now in case you were wondering what all that white fluff is in all these shots, that's part of the disintegrating support wad that we custom made for these things. Okay, so you're going to aim a little bit high. I'm going to aim at the very top edge of the plate. Okay, we'll see if that does. Cause others, it, there's no rhyme or reason to these things. They're kind of going everywhere. Yeah. Okay, I'm ready. Here we go. There's kind of a, a trend here. They kind of, yeah, they, sometimes they fly low, sometimes they fly low. There, there is no trend. There's okay. a trend in that they're, none of them are going anywhere the other one went. So <laughs> I was holding up here on this top edge thinking that we were going to get another low shot. Instead, we hit back up here 11 o'clock. It skipped off the edge and you've probably seen in the slow motion by now. It looks like it ruptured that cartridge. Yeah. Sent gas and... We technically hit the plate. Now I made 11 of these things and we're showing you every single one. Somehow Greg was able to hit something with every single shot. That's the amazing part here, I think. Okay, if we hadn't gotten a ridiculous enough, one of the ideas was to shoot a steel plate with something on fire next to it. So we put a shop rag here, we're gonna douse it in. Gasoline. Gasoline. Yeah. This is like $8 of gasoline right now. Jeff. I know. It's got some two-stroke oil in there, too. Thanks, Patreon donors. <laughs> now get on the table. How are you going to get gas all over your rag without getting it on the table? I don't know. We're going to burn our table down. That's good, Greg. Save some for the ride home. <laughs> We're not going to be able to get out of here using <laughs> your blue gasoline. Okay, we got full rifling. I don't know where this thing is uh, zeroed. But... I don't know either, but just try something. All right, when you're ready. I'm ready. Wow. Wow. Chamber's open. Ready. Wow. Wow. What you're seeing is how nitrous oxide interacts with combustion. Nitrous oxide is not flammable, it's an inert gas. When it reaches a high enough temperature like in the combustion cycle of an engine or a big fire like this, the nitrous oxide breaks down into nitrogen and oxygen and the oxygen of course causes a much more efficient burn. This breakdown doesn't occur till about 570 degrees Fahrenheit, so the release of the oxygen happens at the perfect time inside of a combustion engine. Okay, I guess uh ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Here we go.
Yeah, I'm ready. And finally, one of the most requested targets, the ballistic gel. Now I do feel bad because we did not get to some of the other popular targets that people wanted us to see, like the clay block and the watermelon and stuff. Now I thought with 11 of these things, we'd be able to get to all the targets, but because they were not very accurate, we had to do some repeat shots. Washed it off, because gel washes off real nice. I'm not sure if you can see anything out of this clear ballistic gel made out of iced tea, but it entered here, it started veering completely sideways, <laughs> and it actually came out over here. It exited right here. This is the main cylinder exited right here. Maybe. And look, at, look at that. Though. Is that all a, the toilet paper? That's a Debris little or? tiny hole though. So that's that's probably like the cap or something that was on the nipple. I don't know. Because look, if you look in here, the big wound channel ends right here at this thing. Okay. You can actually see the wound channel maybe better through here. Yeah. See the big wound channel ends right here and then another little piece zipped off and popped out. And, right it, and it, it bypassed our Kevlar vest Completely. so it shot out the side somewhere. So these are not only inaccurate when they are headed to the target, they're inaccurate when they hit the target. <laughs> Even the target won't keep them. You know, we we had some other targets that we wanted to use, a cement bag, a watermelon. watermelon. But because we had to retry a couple of shots, we went through a lot of them that way. Yeah. And honestly, I don't know if I could have handled any more being out here. I it don't is, know. It's miserable it, hot right now. It is 105. I swore I wasn't going to... Just be out here for four hours and green water is actually boiling hot <laughs> all of the metal targets are too hot to even handle with your hands so yeah you yeah. gotta use gloves <laughs> we're rather miserable i've still got to shoot some video when uh, jeff leaves so we're gonna wrap this one up we hope you enjoyed it it was a completely surprise it was a complete surprise for everybody we didn't really know what it was i think do. we and... did everything possible to make try to make these work yep. and they just uh, the surprising thing is we hit as many targets as we yeah, did yeah. they flew out of the gun at least that was <laughs> they were really fast they blew up when they hit hard things and yeah so i don't know kind of a surprise and uh, definitely at least interesting to work to see because everybody's talking about shooting cylinders all the time shooting co2 yeah and i think the biggest problem is that they're so long and so light and a few people did predict that know, what would you say benefit yeah their shape has no stabilization character oh so. right right so not it's like a big a... giant cylinder you're t tossing a hot dog down a hallway you're you're not going to get a it's you know a perfect it, 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 arrow. It, in my mind it kind of looked like when they're dropping napalm those napalm they just tumble through the oh, air that's, that's what, what kind of what these look mind? like yeah i had completely different things in my mind oh okay <laughs> All right, either way, it was fun. It's a little hot out here. I hope you guys are staying cool somewhere. It was still fun to shoot these things for you, and uh, we hope you liked it. Comment down in the section below, in the uh, comment section down below. Give it a thumbs up if you, uh, if you like the video. If or thumbs look, down, I don't care. Yeah, thumbs down. That, that Good helps. luck seeing that one. Oh. Nowadays, can... when you hit the thumbs up, you get a little party every time you do that. So uh, yeah, you get like try a, that out. You get like a bonus token yeah. from YouTube. It buzzes your finger and makes you uh, forget your name for Yeah, about when you give seconds. a thumbs up, you get a, a, a token and it's just one less ad the next time. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's like I, I, I promise you that. So, there'll be a little something extra in your check this month, folks. <laughs> we appreciate you stopping by and we will see you on the next video. Woo! When you're ready. I'm ready. Wow. Wow. Chamber's open. Fire, fire.